Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'm going to make a Sri Lankan dish, which is going to be uh, made with jackfruit. It's a jackfruit curry, and I'm going to be making fresh masalas, Sri Lankan, you know, curry powder, as well as a pole sambal. Uh, typically, for a jackfruit curry, they add coconut milk, but I'm going to be uh, grinding fresh coconut with uh, green chilies and making a pole sambal, and um, and showing you how to make this curry. So, without wasting any time, let's just dive right in and uh, let's learn how to make this dish. So the first steps is to cut the jackfruit. Cutting the jackfruit is can get a little tricky because it is very sticky and it has a lot of glue-like things that are coming up. A good tip is to actually oil your fingers as well as the knife that you're using. So when you're doing that, it helps in you know, uh, you, you know, using the jackfruit uh, easy and cutting it and also doing it very easy. Okay. So I'm just going to take out the skin and then um, and then oil my fingers as well as the knife. I'm just going to cut just one part of it and that's it, it looks really nice and tender and perfect. So notice that it is already feeling sticky so well I have to oil it, I'm going to generously oil my hands and, and the knife as well. Be very careful if you have a sharp knife. There's a lot of seeds in jackfruit. Don't remove the seeds. The seeds can be eaten and it tastes delicious in the curry, okay? So now that the jackfruit is cut, I'm gonna keep this aside and then make the Sri Lankan curry powder and then the pole sambal as well. Just gonna put this aside and then start making it. So now to make the Sri Lankan curry powder, I'm gonna first roast all the spices in my pan. Once it's roasted, I'm gonna be grinding it in my spice jar, okay? So turn on the heat. And I'm going to add in the coriander seeds, the black pepper, cumin, fennel, somf, the cardamom, red chilies, cinnamon, mustard, and that's about it. And I'm going to roast this for about a minute until on medium heat until you see that all the you'll see the coriander, you'll see the mustard, fennel all crackling up, and you'll also sm start smelling the aromas of all the spices. Once you do that, turn off the heat, and we'll blend it into a powder. So the spices are roasted beautifully and notice that you uh, felt a little bit of crackling that is happening and I can smell the aromas as well and I'm going to allow it to cool just a bit and then blend into a nice fine curry powder. So I'm going to add it into my small spice jar and spice jars are great for grinding um, you know, small quantities of spice powder and then it, you know, it gets a really smooth powder and it's good to always you know, own a nice spice jar and this is one of my favorite mixers which has this particular equipment. Okay, and I'm just going to turn it on and then blend into a fine powder. Notice that the spices are beautifully ground. It has a little bit of texture there and I like to have it because it gives a nice, um, um, a nice flavor and touch to the curry as well. So now the next step is to make the pole sambal. So pole sambal is essentially fresh coconut ground along with um, onions, red chilies, uh, a little bit of salt and, and some lemon as well. And a lot of times the, the uh, shrimp is also used, dried shrimp is also used to make the pole sambal. But here I'm just making the classic version of it. Okay, so I'm going to add in the coconut into my medium sized grinder jar. And this grinder jar is awesome, it would just grind about anything. Uh, almost anything and it's really good and it's got sharp blades and makes a nice smooth paste and it's perfect for chutneys. Salt and also I'm going to squeeze in the lemon right away. So I'm also going to add in a pinch of sugar. This is completely optional but I think it brings and heightens out the flavors of the pole sambal. Typically the sambal is ground in a mixer grinding stone like the pestle and mortar, the ammi color that they call it, right? And uh, but with these mixes, it becomes really uh, simple and quick and gets done in a flash. Okay, I'm going to turn it on and then grind it without any water. So 
So after you grind it a bit, you need to, since we're not adding any water, we need to bring out and clean the sides of the, um, the mixer, the jar, so that we bring it together again and then grind it into a nice smooth, uh, coarse, actually coarse chutney. Okay, that's it. So now this is just perfectly done. It's like a coarse, um, sort of semi-coarse chutney. And, um, and uh, the onions, the moisture comes from the onions as well as the coconut, so we didn't have to add any water at all. Okay, so that's it. So now I'm going to actually cook all of this in a pressure cooker and then by adding a few more things which adds to the extra flavor. Now I'm ready to cook the entire jackfruit curry. So in my pressure cooker, I'm gonna add in the oil. You know, add in the garlic, some ginger, curry leaves, just tear the curry leaves so it brings out more flavors, and some sliced onions. So I'm going to saute all of these ingredients until the onions are lightly browned, okay? This takes about two to three minutes. Now that the onions are lightly browned and it's got that perfect light color and it's softened as well, I'm going to add in all the masalas. This is the Sri Lankan curry powder that we made. Delicious and spicy. Adds a great taste to the curry. And this is the pole sambal, that is the coconut, onion and chili paste with a little bit of lemon salt and sugar. And now I'm going to add in the cut jackfruit, which is the baby jackfruit and the salt to taste. We'll add some water, we'll mix it up. Now we'll cover the pressure cooker and then pressure cook for three to four whistles and our jackfruit curry will be ready to be served with some pot rice. So now I'm ready to open the pressure cooker and the jackfruit curry will be ready. Oh, it's brilliantly cooked, it's soft and um, it's a little thick, so if you want to dilute the curry, you can add a little bit of water and make it more gravyish. Based on what you're going to be having it, if it's going to be some paratha, then you can just leave it like that. If you want to have it with some rice, then you can dilute it. And um, that's it. So now I'm ready to serve this curry. Give it a taste. Adjust the salt and chilies um, if you like, and then um, to suit your taste, and then uh, you know, give it a brisk boil after you add all of them. Now I'm ready to just serve it into a bowl and then have it for lunch. So I hope you found this recipe interesting and simple. It's packed with flavors from the pole sambal and the Sri Lankan curry spice powder. Give this a try, serve it along with some hot rice or along with a Ceylon paratha as well. And it'll, be, and it'll taste brilliant. Um, so when you do try this recipe, don't forget to share your feedback in the comments below because I'll always be looking to hear back from you. So until then, until next time, happy cooking and healthy eating.